Welcome to another Time with Ken. I'm Ken Steele, and this week we're on location at the University of Waterloo, taking a look inside the Velocity Incubator, the world's largest free business incubator, to find out what makes it tick. During our visit, we got a tour of the Velocity Garage by director Jay Shaw. And we had a chance to chat with four of the dynamic young entrepreneurs in the Velocity program. Well, Health IM is a software platform that helps enhance uh, police uh, mental health crisis response. Uh, we're focused on helping teachers assessing student by their skills and kind of demonstrating how they meet competency and standards. So we're a social company and we're creating reading material for individuals with Alzheimer's and dementia to improve their quality of life and their dignity. Acorn cryopreserves people's young cells so that we can use them in the future with advanced medical technology. You're terrifying me. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take 10 and take a look. Hundreds of colleges and universities across North America now have business incubators of one kind or another. In fact, we dedicated an episode of 10 with Ken to the subject last year, talking about the trend, which combines both experiential learning opportunities and research commercialization. The largest free incubator program in the world is here at the University of Waterloo, Velocity, which has nurtured more than 175 companies in the eight years since it was established. Thalmic Labs would be a fairly notable one. Uh, there are reaching that 150 person scale, so sizable scale from when they were here with about 10 people when they graduated from Velocity. Right. Vidyard would be another interesting example on the software as a service side. Companies like Thalmic, Bufferbox, these are all people that came out of the same program in mechatronics that I did. So these are kind of the role models that we've always heard about during school. Maluba is another good example. Just last week actually was announced they were acquired by Microsoft mm. um, and they were probably in that 50 to 75 person range just before they were acquired. Kick Interactive actually would be one of the other big ones, right. the messaging app. They were um, not necessarily out of this program, they were out of the Velocity Residence program, but still within that Velocity uh, family. Mm -hmm. The Velocity family at the University of Waterloo includes the downtown Velocity Garage Incubator. On campus, Velocity Science Facilities for startups in the materials and life sciences and a campus makerspace and lounge called Velocity Start. What first caught my eye about the Velocity program was the revolutionary idea of a residence incubator, a dorm cubator, which brought together students with entrepreneurial leanings to try to create the next Facebook. Uh, my co-founder was stayed at the Velocity Residence for a term, um, so that was kind of our initial exposure to uh, to the program. You're in a space where everyone that you're living with is also trying to formulate ideas, figure out, you know, is entrepreneurship right for them? Could they form a team of, of like-minded individuals that could actually, you know, build something? So far, the Velocity Residence has graduated more than 15,000 students. In the Velocity Garage specifically, we, we require people to be working on their companies full-time. Um, and so being a student and working in okay. a company full time can have quite a challenge. In most cases, we see companies coming in in that fourth year level, um, generally encouraged by capstone projects. Earlier than that, they tend to more participate on the programs we offer on campus, whether that's through STAR, through the residence, or through science. The idea actually uh, started when I was in my last year of my studies at the University of Waterloo, and then I entered Velocity about a year after graduating when I had a bit more time. How did you first get involved with the Velocity program at Waterloo? I actually didn't become involved as a student, which is how I think most people, you know, part of the residence and came to Velocity. I discovered Velocity after I graduated. I applied to the Velocity Finals Fund okay. with Sesame. Unfortunately, I actually never won the venture, but I was able to make enough progress and convince them that, you know, this is worth a shot and allow me into the garage. And we have a lot of inbound applications, like we probably have over 30 applications a month that we're vetting. We are an open program, so it doesn't have to be University of Waterloo students or alumni specifically. It can be anyone from anywhere. Based on just that written application, we see a fit, a potential fit with the program. We bring that team in for an interview. It's probably about 20% that we let in. And, and we also acknowledge we don't always have all the answers, right? In some cases, we might think a company might not be viable, and then they'll go and prove us wrong, which is awesome. In many ways, the success of Waterloo's Velocity hinges on its co-op program. Many of the people you'd see here are actually co-op students. So there's companies that have been created maybe just a year or two or three ago that are now hiring co-op students, providing a very rich, early stage mm. company experience. Some of those co-op students come back and start their own companies. In my undergrad, actually here at Waterloo, they have an awesome program in co-op. I had the opportunity to go to different labs. I've done six co-op terms as part of the curriculum at Waterloo Engineering. Uh, I spent all six at technology startups. 
the largest company I've ever worked at had 20 people at the time. So I worked at companies like Clearpath Robotics, uh, Arian Labs, Cross Chasm. Almost half the company I worked at was started by Waterloo alumni. And we also have co-op students from the University of Waterloo that we regularly employ. Did you always know you were going to become an entrepreneur after your program? When, when did that moment of inspiration strike? Sure, good question. Absolutely not. I was going to be a, a scientist and an academic for the rest of my life. I definitely didn't graduate thinking that I was going to be an entrepreneur. It was never on my radar. I was actually originally going to go to McGill for performing arts for violin. I've been playing violin for 15 years. The union of business and technology was something that was very, uh, very interesting to me. Um, and entrepreneurship really fits that, fits that bill. I came into Waterloo, it completely changed my trajectory. I, I think Velocity swept me by surprise, and the biotech industry itself is something that I've become more romantic about than my original aspiration. There was kind of a call for submissions um, on an on-campus incubator at St. Paul's Greenhouse um, for people who had an idea, and at that time this was just an idea and I came forward with that. It's one of those things that kind of just fell in my lap and it's going well so far. I just reflected back on the experience I've had during co-op at these other startups. Entrepreneurship wasn't really this novel you know, alternative that I considered. That was my experience at Waterloo. When you're at Waterloo, you hear stories about people being entrepreneurial all the time. Seeing people start companies, um, I think it inspires people to think that it is possible, and that's what's so magical about what's going on at Waterloo. We're not here to make new venture creation necessarily easier, mm. as you know, just just make it more approachable. That that might be one of the outcomes, but really, we want to make sure that the the vast majority of our time investment, dollars investment, all of that, um, go towards making our companies better. There's companies that are very early stage, they might not have fully identified what product market fit actually looks like. And there's companies that have on the order of low millions or several hundred thousand dollars of recurring revenue per year. So that's a very wide spectrum of company progression. Right. Uh, and so we ended up splitting velocity into three different stages. So what we're standing in right now is stage one and stage two. Um, Stage one is the only part of our program that actually feels more like an accelerator than an incubator because it's time boxed to 90 days. Okay. So you enter the program and you have 90 days to either make it to stage two or to exit the program. And so in, in that stage, what we're looking for is the students, the team, or the company to really prove that the marketplace wants whatever they have. It's not just interesting from a technology perspective, it's needed. In stage two, that's when they build it. It's, it's saying you've proven that you've gotten some market out there that wants what you're going to be selling. Don't spend you know a year of your life producing something that people aren't going to want. Right. But now that you've shown that, go ahead and build it. So we just entered stage two uh, and we do have sales right now. So we're primarily selling to long-term care homes. Well, at the point where you have repeatable sales, we move you into stage three. And that's where we see a lot of the scaling happening because that's when you need to hire salespeople, you need to hire operations folks, you need to hire customer service. You probably need to fund all of that because it's very capital intensive. So then you need investors. A lot of that type of operation happens in stage three. We're for, uh, stage three. Um, so we are we are fully in market. Uh, we have full paying police services in Southern Ontario that are working with us so far. Uh, we're stage three and we've actually recently transitioned out so that half our team is in Toronto. Phase two is actually our biggest segment right now. Uh, as a reflection of how hard it is to actually build product mm. that's ready to ship. About 50% of our program is in stage two. Okay. Uh, and the rest is split almost equally actually between stage one and three. What's the best thing about being part of Velocity for your company? Oh man, there's so many. So they've, uh, they've got amazing mentorship. You know, the, the people around here really uh, make sure that what you're doing is on the right track. Tons of support, like not, not just um, like space and funding, but it's um, uh, mentorship as well. The best thing about Velocity is the support you receive from all ends. I, I love the legal and accounting help that we get here at Velocity. It's really been helpful so far. So I know people always talk about, you know, the people, the community. There's a community of other startups here, which make it really nice to work with uh, and, and learn from, learning from other startups as well on big decisions. For example, uh, we were, for the first time ever, I was trying to figure out what's our financial projection. And I need to understand cash flow, I need to understand profit versus loss. The benefit of being in the garage, there's a company next to me who's you know six months a year ahead of me. So I just physically grabbed the founder who just did this six months ago. You know, late at night, 11 o'clock on a Friday, and I, I could only find, you know, other, other startup co-founders to ask them, you know, people who have gone through it before I have, you know, what did you do in this situation? What's your advice? And that helped a lot. I think when people are going through harder things, it's nice to kind of feel like you're not alone. And then when you do have those victories, you can celebrate together. So that's been great so far. Okay. One of things you'll notice in our facility yeah. is just a, an abundance of meeting rooms. If you come around 2 p.m. in the afternoon, every single one of these rooms is taken. Um, either people making 
sales calls or external calls or just having two-person meetings. And they've got great names like Mordor and the Fortress of Solitude, the Bat Cave. Yeah, so the names are actually chosen by the startups because uh, we want everyone to feel a sense of ownership to the space. Obviously, the geek thread runs strong. <laughs> One of them is our gymnasium here. We find this to be used quite heavily um, as a de-stressor because the hours that the folks are here are very long. Um, and one, they need a place to just vent. The other, they need a way to build community with themselves. Obviously, the space and the facility itself is, is wonderful. I think without Velocity, we wouldn't have the foothold in order to get off the ground. We started off using Professor Labs, and then we moved to Velocity Science because they gave us our own space, which was really nice. So that's the space they have on campus. Mm -hmm. uh, we were there for about eight months, just doing our preliminary research. Uh, I had hired my first co-op student there, and then we moved over here to the garage. They built an amazing facility that has a biological safety cabinet, and it's, it's just got all the equipment that we need to scale up to the next level. And several years ago, maybe about five years ago, most of the companies that would have been here were purely software companies. Two or three years ago, that wave shifted a little bit to be more hardware-based, and we started seeing companies that had physical product. We started seeing a lot of things uh, happen at desks that probably shouldn't be happening at desks, like small-scale manufacturing. And yep, shipping and packing. Yeah, exactly. So then we changed our facilities to accommodate that. This is what we call the assembly space. We have a company huh. that's making um, spray coatings for agriculture. Huh. The product's called Frost Armor. Um, when sprayed on a plant, it kind of covers the whole plant with foam, and it prevents frost damage. Alchemy works on films um, that have very different functional properties. So in one case, their films are extremely shock absorbent. Uh, and so they test shooting steel bearings at windshields to oh, show yeah. to show uh, how impact absorbent their material is. The numbers here actually represent the speed at which they shot a steel bearing. This is actually a drone cage, uh, so we can oh. we can fly drones inside safely. We do have several drone companies, so they can use this to do flight testing, flight simulation. These three facilities here are what represent our science labs. Okay, um, so this is garage science? This is garage science, exactly. And so this, again, came out of that philosophy that we have where we look at what new grads and alumni are doing in terms of new venture creation, and then we build support systems around that. We started seeing a lot more fundamental science and health technologies that wanted to commercialize and needed a place to do that. But to do continued product development, they needed access to lab facilities. And so we have a science equipment room, uh, we have a biosafe lab, and we have a wet lab that's got 16 lab benches, uh, one bench per company. Many of these companies are working on things that take years to commercialize, and so facilities like this make it possible. Without that, there just wouldn't be the capacity for them to continue doing product development. What's the difference when we move from the university research bench mm -hmm. to the incubator bench? Yeah, so this is entirely about commercial viability and commercializing whatever it is that the product came out of a research lab is. So the goal here isn't to do necessarily curiosity-driven research or discovery-based research, just to further a very specific product or product's properties into the market. Mm -hmm. Vitameter here is a good example of that. They have a tabletop device um, that takes a prick of your blood and then does vitamin analysis in real time. So you can figure out how much B12 you have, how much <laughs> iron you have, how much vitamin D you have, and then react accordingly. And so this is our prototyping lab. Everything from 3D printers, CNC routers, basic tools like band saws, you know, drill presses, workbenches with hand tools. Velocity is the largest free incubator in the world. Uh, which means you take no equity, you take no rent uh, from the companies that are here. Mm -hmm. How the heck do you fund this place? <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that's a common question that we get. Unsurprisingly, it's a little bit of a complicated answer. And so, <laughs> Sorry. Uh, no, no, that's quite all right. This program wouldn't exist without the commitment on the University of Waterloo's part to want to further entrepreneurship and the entrepreneurial spirit. And so a substantial amount of our funding comes from the University of Waterloo. The balance actually comes from programs at the provincial and federal level that are looking to support innovation and new venture creation and, and youth employment. Those are kind of the three uh, policy categories that we fit within. From the grand perspective of the funding model, we hope that many of these companies uh, will we'll beat the odds, per se, when it comes to new venture creation and have uh, significant commercial success, and we'll, we'll give back. We were one of the companies that were reached out to to say, you know, we're going to commit ourselves to giving back to the community if our company succeeds in a big way. Um, I think that was the, the startup pledge. We even got little socks mm. with Waterloo logo on it. Yeah, it was very cool. Kick is a great example. Mm -hmm. uh, Ted Livingston, the founder there, uh, started in the Velocity Residence and he decided that this program and the university itself was so critical to his, uh, his success and his company's success that he philanthropically gave back to help us start the Velocity Fund. Right. Uh, and so some of this is really just betting on our alumni and our students and saying that they are going to beat the odds of commercial viability. 
And then with that success, they'll, they'll feed the ecosystem so we can continue doing our great work. Jay, you yourself are an alumnus of the program. Uh, you started 10 years ago, I think I read. Uh, roughly speaking. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, and then again, in your fourth year, you were working on a capstone project, I think. And then, right. uh, and then that turned into a successful company that I gather you made a few bucks from selling that to Google. What brought you back to Velocity, Jay? Yeah, so I mean, what brought, brought me back here after the acquisition, after my time at, at Google, was really the, uh, the depth of innovation that's happening at the stage here. Some of the companies here are solving tremendously large problems. So we have a company here called Kidney Labs. They, they are working on a synthetic kidney, so an artificial kidney, completely man-made, that does all the same functions that your kidney would. So if you suffer from renal failure or you need your kidney removed, this is an implantable device that stays in your body just like a pacemaker that would perform all the filtration functions your kidney does. So dialysis won't exist anymore if this company is successful. That is a massive healthcare shift that we can be a part of here. And so that's just one example of many types of companies that the, the technical depth that's required there is, is tremendous. That came out of PhD research from the University of Waterloo campus. So that connection, that the ability to bring really fundamental ideas and fundamental research that might be years in the making, they might have been brewing for quite a while, but really now moving them into that commercial space, I, I don't think there's anywhere else on the planet that we can do it at that depth. Hopefully this extended episode has given you a good look at Waterloo's Velocity program. We've tried to boil down an entire morning of interviews into just 16 minutes. It took a lot of editing. And certainly I learned a lot about Velocity, particularly about its tight connections to Waterloo's co-op program and student capstone projects, and the synergistic benefits of having startup founders working side by each. It was also striking how many of these young CEOs never intended to become entrepreneurs until they were immersed in the innovation culture at Waterloo. Next week, we'll look at the broader innovation ecosystem at the University of Waterloo when I sit down with President and Vice Chancellor Faridun Hamdalapur. What does it take to become recognized as Canada's most innovative university? Tune in and find out. To be sure you don't miss it, take a moment now to join more than 13,000 10 with Ken subscribers and followers on any of a dozen platforms. You'll find links to all of these channels and an email subscription form on our website at 10withken.com. I want to thank Jay Shaw for taking so much time out of a busy day to speak with me, and also to the four young entrepreneurs we interviewed Daniel McKenzie of Health IM, Ian Tao of Sesame, Rachel Thompson of Marlena Books, and Stephen Tenholder of Acorn Cryotech. Their comments really enriched this episode. If you'd like to learn more about them and their companies, we're going to release the full-length interviews wherever you watch this episode. As always, I have to thank my stalwart videographer John Mathias, who really went above and beyond on this one. Very special thanks go to Waterloo Media Relations Manager Pamela Smythe, who orchestrated all the logistics for our visit, and in retrospect, was profoundly patient with us at times. This episode was an experiment, and I'd really appreciate hearing your thoughts. Was it worth all the extra effort to go on site like this? I'd estimate it took about six times the effort of a typical episode. Should we do more on-site episodes? Do you have suggestions? Please leave a comment below or drop me an email at ken at eduvation.ca. Thanks for watching. I hope to see you next time. 10 with Ken is a production of Eduvation Inc. Copyright 2017. I'm available for conference keynotes, campus PD events, board retreats, and committee workshops in person or now virtually too. For more information, please visit www.eduvation.guru or 10withken.com.